what, like in those old religious movies, you want a voice from above? Uh, Just tell me on the one. Nothing breaks my heart more than a woman who has gone astray. A girl who is not like other girls. A girl who's like, you know what? I'd rather hang out with the boys since they're so drama free and women are so complicated and way too much trouble. There is no one who personifies the ins and outs of internalized misogyny more than the pick me girl because guess what? The pick me girl slash woman of today is the miserable, bitter, misogynistic auntie of tomorrow. So today let's talk about the woman who despises herself more than she could ever despise any other woman. Today, let's talk about the pick me. Hello, hello. Hi guys. How is everybody doing? I know I've been gone for what seems like forever now, but man, you know, those mental breaks are very, very necessary. And also there's a lot of stuff happening in my personal life as well. So your girl needed that time off. In the meantime, you know, this channel has had its first uh, anniversary. So I've been on YouTube for a little over a year now. So yay. I wanted to say a big thank you to all the folks, my community that continue to support me and are back here again for another video. I appreciate you more than you could ever imagine. For those of you guys that are new here, my name is Yusra. Welcome. And for those that have been here, welcome back. Let's get into it. Now, who's the first woman that comes into mind when you think, pick me? Let me guess, it's Pearl, isn't it? I think all evil kind of comes from women when I realize all the world's problems come from women. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just going to use girl slash woman interchangeably here because the pick me girl is the term that's been coined. But think woman, okay, when I'm talking about a pick me girl, obviously. So the truth is that essentially the pick me girls are everywhere, right? It's Kendall Jenner every time she gets on an interview and she's like, I'm a tomboy and I'm not into makeup. And she's a, literally a supermodel, you know, walking down runways, okay? It's Carrie Bradshaw torturing herself and her friends on a daily basis just to get Big's approval. And guess what? He's going to walk away from you on your wedding day because you're never going to get it. You're never going to get that approval. And then, of course, like I mentioned, it's women like just pearly things, right, who are out here fighting diligently for men's rights while also, you know, bringing women down in the process. Is it not exhausting? Performing, acting, living your entire life just for male validation, just so you can satisfy the male gaze? An interesting TikTok that I came across recently was um, some new terminology that I had not heard before. It basically talked about how in any relationship, there is a black cat and then there is the golden retriever. If you want to be happy in your relationship or dating and you want your man to chase you like the loyal golden retriever, you have to become the ultimate black cat. Black cat, golden retriever. Black cat, golden retriever. Black cat, golden retriever. Black cat, her golden retriever. Black cat, golden retriever. Black cat, golden retriever. Basically, the black cat in the relationship is the person that holds more power. They're the catch. And the golden retriever essentially is, you know, the person that's just doting over their partner. They're consistently doing the chasing. They're the one that, you know, is just like can't get enough of the black cat, okay, or their partner in a relationship. And what this creator was saying that basically in any relationship, if a woman is a golden retriever and the man is the black cat, those relationships tend to struggle a lot more than if it was the opposite case. Tristan was the ultimate black cat. She was a loyal golden retriever that would never abandon or leave him and that's why it didn't work. He is the black cat. She is the loyal golden retriever. Black cat, golden retriever. I mean, I thought this was pretty cool terminology, but also I thought it's just another clever way of saying that if, you know, like a woman loves a man more than the man loves a woman um, in that relationship, you know, there's a significant delta of love between the two. Um, essentially, that relationship is basically just like, you know, destined to doom, right? And the thing here is that, you know, coming back to what we're talking about here, oftentimes I think that the pygmies out there, they end up being, they're destined to be the golden retrievers in the relationship because how are you going to be the catch or the black cat, you know, essentially if you live and die for like male validation and the male gaze, right? You're telling me 
that this man bought a house for himself by himself you're helping him renovate it with your bare hands and helping him pay off his mortgage all for a house you don't even own where is your family where are your friends and this is why i've seen uh you know pick me's be in literally the worst relationships ever out there it's what a lot of people often call that struggle love nobody wants that now more interesting terminology that i came across on tiktok while i was gone was the concept of the shut up ring and i thought this was brilliantly coined okay by this creator and i'm gonna put their name on the screen so you guys can go check out more of her content a lot of her content is really really good people keep asking for a definition of a shut up ring a shut up ring is a ring or proposal that a man gives you with the sole intent of buying time he does not intend to fulfill the promise of a proposal you know he's never going to marry you but he's given you a ring to shut you up and keep you calm while he continues to get all the benefits that he wants from you. Now, if you are a pick me, right? And you basically, um, you know, just want that male validation. Like that is what your world revolves around, right? Um, like I said previously, there's a high chance that you are not going to be in the healthiest relationship out there because essentially you want a relationship more than, you know, you want anything else, right? More than your own needs, more than your own self-respect, more than anything else, right? You want that label that essentially you're in that relationship. And oftentimes when this happens, you know, your partner can most likely detect that you have this lack of self-respect or lack of self-esteem or however you want to call it, right? Your partner can see this. I mean, it's obvious. It, it's going to ooze out of you, your insecurities. And so say you've been in a relationship for a significant while now and you've been this like ride or die for this man and you're like you know what i have put in the time i have put in the years you know it's time for me to get that ring well a shut up ring is essentially a ring that a man is going to give you to shut you up basically he has no intention of marrying you but he likes the convenience of having you around and so what he's gonna do is he's gonna put a ring on it with absolutely no intention of marrying you and you will likely just be dragged on in that relationship for years and years and who knows how long more to come. More versions. Put this on. What is he doing? Does it keep going? Light the candle. This is so romantic. Where is this leading? Going up. Oh my god. Pour the glass. Nice. We've been together two years. You are the girl of my dreams. Oh my God. I want to take the next step and ask you a huge question. Follow the roses. Babe, what is this? Open me. Will you do my laundry? All of this for this? Wait, hold on. Open it up. For the rest of our lives. If you're the type of woman that is a pick me, Essentially, you are providing so many benefits to that man that he's not going to want to let you go. But at the same time, no man really wants to pick me, right? Because you're not essentially the catch. And so before you know it, you've been serving this man's needs for God knows how long. And years go by, years go by. And maybe he'll end up marrying you, but is it worth it? I can assure you that a woman that has a good amount of self-esteem, a, a good amount of self-respect for herself, she would never be found in such a situation. And yes, love is blind. And, you know, a lot of us, you know, want to fall head over heels for our person and want to live, you know, that fairy tale life. But how long can you stay blind to the fact that what your needs are and what a certain relationship is providing to you? They are miles apart. I talked about this in another video where there was this, uh, you know, girl I know. She was in a relationship with a guy for like six years, seven years, whatever. And she really, really wanted to marry him. He, she really, really was like, you know, marriage, I want that label. I want us to just be, you know, like together. And, you know, she had put in all the time and effort. And the guy randomly one day decided to break up with her. And he was remarried within like, I don't know, six, seven months or something after he broke up with her. I mean, is this the type of love that anybody wants to fall for? I don't really think so. I don't recommend it. And I want to go on a tangent here, right? And have a side discussion, right? Because under that video in the comment section and also a couple of subscribers mentioned to me basically saying, well, is marriage even necessary? And do we as women really even need that label? And to me, I think that's a very good question, right? Because 
I know this uh, couple that they're 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 essentially like very very happy. They've been together for I think nine years at this point, and they're they're not married, right? And they're also like a child free by choice kind of couple, and they're very very happy. They're very satisfied, and they basically said, hey, like we don't need uh to sign any paperwork or to put a label on it. And they're, they're, they seem genuinely happy, at least from what I can tell, right? For someone else, you know, maybe someone who wants to feel a little bit more secure in their relationship, a little bit more protected, they may look at the legal benefits that marriage provides and they might be like, you know what, I need this label on my relationship in order to feel secure with this person, you know? And so I really think that there's no right or wrong answer here. I think, as I always say, there's no games or rules or whatever. I think every single person has their own needs and their own desires. I often meet men who are like, oh, but what if I'm supporting a woman, paying the bills, taking care of her, and I fall down on my luck and she leaves me? And I would automatically be like, well, is this woman your wife? If she's not your wife, I don't understand why you're expecting her to ride it out with you through the hard times. No, if you want someone to be with you for better or for worse for richer or poorer, then you need to marry that woman. If you're not married to her, stop expecting a marriage benefit when you're only a boyfriend or God forbid a situationship. For me personally, like I'm a Capricorn with a lot of Scorpio placements, okay? So I like to do things a little bit more like traditional, if you will, or more like I need the finances to be set. I need those protections to be in place. And because of my Scorpio placements, I'm kind (laughs) of intense about it. You know what I mean? So for me, like if I'm in a relationship and I love that person and he loves me, uh, you know, and we, we have a really good relationship, like why not put the label on it so that the legal benefits, you know, are there for both of us? For someone else, things might be totally different and they might not care. The truth of the matter is that I often think that a lot of the dating games and rules and tips and tricks out there, I feel like, you know, they're silly because how are the needs of a Capricorn ever going to match the needs of a Gemini, for example, right? I think if two people in a relationship are on the same page, right, whether they are on the same page about wanting a label or not wanting a label, right, I think it's all good as long as the two are in agreement. I think the problem occurs where one person is like, I want the label and I've given you this many years of my life and the other person is just not willing to give that to them. And so I've often seen that with pick because their needs come second to their desire to be in a relationship, then that's just what it is. Your needs will always be secondary and they will most likely never get fulfilled. And isn't that a tragedy? The tweet was a screenshot submitted by a man to an advice column type of thing, I think. I should have screenshot it, but I forgot. I'm sorry. But basically in the screenshot, he was saying that he has a wife who's eight months pregnant and for her whole pregnancy, she has not had any pregnancy cravings. Or so he thought. Turns out she has had pregnancy cravings. Obviously, she's pregnant. She's just been paying their neighbor to help her with these cravings when the time comes instead of going to her husband who she got pregnant by. So he confronted her about it and she basically said that at some point, like prior to her pregnancy, Uh, He expressed to her that women who complain about things like that are whining. So she didn't want to be a whiner. So now she doesn't emotionally depend on him for things like that because she doesn't want to make him feel bad. And this is why I always say that it is so important for women to decenter men from our lives. Like we have to center ourselves and our own needs and really just be strong within ourselves, our own self-esteem, have a lot of self-respect so that when we're out there, you know, looking for a relationship, we actually land in healthy relationships that fulfill our needs rather than a pygmy relationship where you're basically just secondary to the person you're in a relationship with. Now, I wanted to have a bit of a serious discussion because, you know, if a pygmy decides to you know be in a bad relationship and continue to you know give her time to somebody that doesn't value her or you know cherish her or whatever and she just ends up ruining her own life right that's one thing and again those are her own life choices but now if that same pick me has lived a very very unhappy life and now she's actively becoming a negative influence to other women around her and to society Well, that's a totally different thing altogether. So very recently, I actually watched this, uh, you know, Netflix documentary. And oh my God, it was so good. I highly recommend that everybody, you know, check it out. It's called To Kill a Tiger. And it's actually a very, very sensitive documentary on the story of a 13-year-old girl who essentially got S.A.'d by three boys. And her father actually goes to the courts 
and tries to fight her case, um, you know, to get her justice. Throughout this journey, right, throughout this father and daughter's uh, journey, um, you know, there's lots of ups and downs. But this one thing I just could not forget. Essentially, the defense attorney, the attorney that was basically defending the monsters that did that to this girl, right? It's her words that I just... I just couldn't get out of my mind, you know, because it's a documentary, right? So a lot of these producers and stuff like that, they are asking questions from everybody, uh, you know, that's a part of the documentary. And so when they come to the defense attorney and they're like, you know, what do you think happened? Why are you defending these boys? She basically went, well, one thing we really have to question is why was it that this girl was out late at night, you know, by herself? When I tell you this line infuriated me, okay, to my core, okay, it, it just because how is it that it's a woman, a woman that's uttering these words when you see you know, what these monsters have done to this 13-year-old girl. How can you say that? Even being a defense attorney, I don't, I don't care, okay? You can, there's different ways you can word what you're going to say, okay? Victim blaming is not it. And that's the thing. It's vile and it's disgusting, okay? And I would go as far as to say that this is a woman, this defense attorney is a woman that has a lot of self-hatred because when you're internalized misogyny runs this deep okay your self-hatred runs even deeper many girls who grow up in a patriarchal uh, society are trained basically to believe that you know male validation is the end all be all and even me okay when i was young i fully rejected the color pink okay because i was like oh no I don't want to be pink. I don't want to be feminine, okay? I want to be taken seriously. I want to be known for the fact that I have a brain and opinions and, you know, I just don't want to be a girly girl. And so while I have empathy for where the pick me mentality actually stems from, but if you as a fully formed adult woman still seek validation from men while simultaneously being harmful to the women around you, no, do better. You perpetuating and continuing this cycle is a massive failure within you as a woman. The pick me girl slash woman to the bitter uh, misogynistic auntie pipeline is a pretty dangerous one. And yes, it is that deep. The thing is that it's almost natural for a lot of us girls when we're growing up and on our you know path to womanhood to have internalized misogynies in our system, okay? Because that's literally the systems that we grow up in. But it is also our job to actively recognize it and once we recognize the internalized misogynies that exist within us to then actively try to fight them and get those out of our system so that that cycle just doesn't continue because the last thing that anybody wants to be is a pick me all right guys that's all from me today i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and i will see you in the next one